Hey guys, Shane from Liberty Under Attack Ready here to provide the fifth update on the Malhor Wildlife Refuge uh, Militia Standoff, uh, so to speak. Uh, but with that said, I'd like to uh, first let you guys know about the uh, confirmed, uh, what is confirmed there at the refuge at this point. Uh, there are four or so still there. Uh, and uh, from what's been uh, what's from what's been said on the uh, defend your base live stream uh, there is one pregnant woman as well and that live stream is ran by uh, supposedly David Fry uh, and I have no reason to uh, believe that that is, is actually not the case uh, but their demands at this point are uh, well uh, we can leave without getting arrested and uh, the other folks uh, are let off of their sentences, like Ammon Bundy and the Hammonds and such. Uh, so uh, that's what's going on at this point. But I want to kind of run through the, uh, and I'm, I'm going to do a, a quick video here on the actual criminal complaints because they are very, very easily accessible. Uh, the first thing I want to mention is the one uh, with the uh, defendants of Eamon Bundy, Ritzheimer, O'Shaughnessy, Ryan Payne, Ryan Bundy, Brian Cavalier, Shauna Cox, and Peter Santilli are, uh, they are, uh, uh, according to Pacer, that uh, 000004 and the one for Jason Patrick, uh, Emmer, and Anderson are 00006. So that is uh, important. Uh, if you're trying to find these court documents uh, via PACER, uh, there are different uh, case numbers. Uh, that being said, there's not much that I want to show uh, according to these criminal complaints because they are very, very easily accessible and you can find them yourself. Uh, but uh, there is uh, one part, uh, whatever they mentioned, Santilli. Let me get down to that real quick. And they also mentioned Finnegan, uh, who was dead at the time of this criminal complaint. So uh, that's uh, <laughs> that's uh, definitely interesting. But uh, yeah, this is uh, for Santilli. Quote, Santilli has identified himself as a member of the Oath Keepers and wears insignia, which indicates his affiliation with the 3% of group detailed below. According to open source information, the Oath Keepers and 3%ers have been identified as organizations associated with the anti-government patriot movement. Well, first off, for you patriots, you're not anti-government, you're for the Constitution. Second off, the folks there at the refuge, and it's been openly stated, uh, whether it's the uh, intention for uh, quelling federal government overreach as far as uh, public or uh, uh, federal land, as, as far as they state it, or if it's for uh, uh, freeing the Hammonds for uh, the bullshit charges that they're facing at this point. It's all, it's not anti-government in the least bit. It definitely isn't. So that rhetoric, that's exactly what I've come to know from uh, the Southern Poverty Law Center. And as far as the, uh, uh, as far as those folks, if you go to libertyunderattack.com, go to the profiling archive, you'll find an entire section on what the Southern Poverty Law Center does. And uh, these are the same tactics that are being used by mainstream media as well as the federal government. So it's definitely a problem. So I feel like that's worth a mention at the very least. And the rest of this is uh, just, uh, they pretty much base their arguments off of uh, uh, YouTube videos, live streams, and uh, screenshots. So uh, that's pretty much it for this screen for uh, for this criminal complaint. Uh, this next one's Jason Patrick, uh, Dwayne Leo Emmer, and Dylan Anderson. And the only thing really to mention out of this is the uh, the actual different case number, which I've already mentioned. But uh, the rest of this is pretty much exactly exactly the same. So uh, I wanted to show the docket for you guys as well, so you know what to uh, expect from these various cases. Um, this is the one. Uh, for uh, the uh, Eamon Bundy, Ritzheimer, O'Shaughnessy, Ryan Payne, Ryan Bundy, Brian Cavalier, Shauna Cox, Peter Santilli. And it starts at number 12, which is interesting. It should have started at 
well, one, <laughs> you know, when, when, when you start a list, you start, start them at one. So, uh, either there's, uh, uh yeah, there's, is it definitely weird? It's definitely a weird starting point for this. And apparently the original criminal complaint was sealed. Um, but, uh, ordered on seal criminal complaints as redacted. Uh, and the one that you just saw was not redacted. Uh, and that was actually released from uh, KTU or some other local news site there in Oregon. But uh, a lot of people have the redacted one. So, uh, yeah, uh, I will put that. As soon as I figure out how I'm going to do this, uh, you look at the number of defendants in this case. And uh, if you've been to LordNairAttack.com and seen the Political Prisoners Archive, uh, it's pretty cut and dry. Like Casey Massey, Skylar Barbeau, uh, William Wolf, and things like that. Uh, it's just kind of as it goes, but with this case, there are a number of defendants, and there will be motions and uh, things of that nature, uh, the court proceedings, uh, documents for every single one of those. So it's going to be, uh, I'm not sure how I'm going to do this, uh, I'll do my best, but uh, nonetheless, this is the most I've been able to find out at this point, it's been only been a couple of days after. And uh, I was definitely missing some of these documents. So with that said, uh, uh, obviously uh, the criminal complaints we have, as I showed you, and those are available through the mainstream local media. And these are just minutes of proceedings, which there are no documents for, uh, unfortunately. Let me see if there's anything else I have for you guys. Um, uh, no, not necessarily. 14... Uh, there are documents for the there there are documents for the minutes, and I will get those up on Liberty Tax Liberty Under Tax site as soon as I finish, uh, or as soon as I figure out how to actually get these up. Um, but I mean, just just for uh, just just to give you guys an example, um, I yeah I do have these documents, but there's really nothing there. So um, as far as those documents, you aren't missing out on anything. Uh, you see this document, you see this docket and the screenshot right now and that's all that you really know at this point and it's only been a few days so uh when i find out things and i i decide how i'm going to do this uh i will definitely get those uh documents available for, available for download so you guys can track the case uh but until then this is pretty much all that's uh, all that's available on the situation um Oh yeah, with, with that said, if, uh, since there are so many defendants, uh, so many defendants, if you uh, acquire any of these documents uh, through a local news site or you pay for them through PACER, uh, we definitely appreciate it if you would send them to us so that we can get them publicly available in a uh, very, very easily downloadable page, like with Skylar Rabos. Uh We would definitely appreciate it. Uh, we're trying to provide judicial transparency and make it uh, available in a very, very easy, uh, easily available format. Um, like, a, like uh, for example, you see Sky Bravo's. You see all the articles Gary Hunt has done on, with, on him. Uh, I think there's one missing, actually, but I'll get that updated. Uh, but all of the documents available in his case are available right here. All available right here. So, I guess, uh, for example, for this document... Uh, this is what we do. We provide judicial, judicial transparency. So if you come across any of these documents from any of these defendants, please send them to us. Uh, you can do that via uh, email, shane at libertyunderattack.com, or you can do so uh, by uh, adding me on Skype. Uh, the username is shane.radliff. That's R-A-D-L-I-F-F. -F. Uh, so definitely appreciate it. And uh, we'll keep you updated as we find out things. But uh, it's probably going to be slow at this point. So uh, with that said, thanks for watching, and uh, we'll definitely talk to you next time. We'll see you later.